Today, uh, we're doing 10.6 in our revealed geometry books, tangents, secants, and angle measures. And we got to start with the new vocab word of the day. What is a secant? And so if you remember chord, chord was any line that started and stopped on a circle. So hit the circle twice, but it started and ended there. And a secant just goes further than that. So secant not just hits the circle, or not just goes through the circle twice, but goes beyond the circle. Now secant could start on the circle and just go beyond it on one side. That would be fine. Right. And so in this picture, both lines L, or I'm sorry, J and K are secants of circle C. So make sure at this point in the unit, if I gave you a blank circle, and I asked you to draw a chord, or a tangent, or a secant, I would hope that you could successfully do so. Also, other words of segments or lines we have inside circles would include diameter and radius. And so chord, tangent, secant, diameter, radius are all things you should be able to draw when given a blank circle. And so we're going to use this now for all these angles. And so it could be a chord or a secant. It could be two chords or secants. And when they cross. Now, we have to make sure we know that this is different than a central angle. Right? They could still cross at the center. But if they cross at the center, then they go by the old central angle rule. If the, whatever this is on the outside... This is also on the inside. That's the central angle rule. So when it's not at the center, then the measure of the arc here, I'm sorry, the measure of the angle, all right, is equal to the arcs added together divided by 2, or half the sum of the arcs. So again, where is the vertex? That's the question you got to ask yourself. Where is the vertex? Inside, not at the center, means that I add the arcs and divide by two. Add the arcs and divide by two. One of three important rules we're going to go over today. So this is when the vertex is inside the circle. Make sure you have that notes on done. And now we're going to look at secant or a chord. This is a secant here, all right, and a tangent when they meet, all right. And again, the, the big deal here is where is the vertex? And the vertex here is on the circle. The vertex here is on the circle, right, right down here. And so we have already had some like that. It's the same rule as inscribed. So it's just like inscribed angles. Right? And so because the angle is on the circle, the measure of the angle is just half the arc, or the arc divided by 2. And so it's a little bit weirder to see the arc here than it is in an intercepted angle. But it's the same rule. This points down here, this whole arc from to the bottom of that ray to where it hits the ray again. That whole arc, all right, whatever that measure is, half of that would be angle 2. And the same thing on the other side. Whatever that arc is, half of that would be angle 1. Because the vertex is on the circle. And so when the vertex is outside the circle, this has a, its own rule. It could be all kinds of things here. We have, in this case, a couple secants, right? a secant and a tangent, or a couple tangents. Any of these cases, the vertex, which is point A in all three examples, is the arcs subtracted and so the measure of the angle is arc 
minus arc. I'll do arc 1 minus arc 2 divided by 2. Now, which one's arc 1, which one's arc 2? All right. You want a positive number, so always do bigger number minus smaller number. Right? Or you can think of it, arc 1 is always further away from the angle. Okay, but I just think of it as we want a positive answer number. And so bigger number minus smaller number divided by 2. And so all of those three rules, vertex, inside, means you add the arcs and divide by 2. Vertex on the circle, it's just half the arc. And vertex outside a circle is subtract the arcs and divide by 2. And so you need to know those three rules. Also, you're finding the angle every time here. If we're ever finding the arcs, then we have to go in reverse. So if we're ever finding arcs, we're not going to divide by 2. We're going to be doing the opposite. We're going to multiply by 2. And we'll look at some examples of that. Where is the vertex? K is the vertex. It's inside the circle. So I know right now I can add up these two and divide by two. The problem is those two connect to these two angles. And so I'm going to put a little y right here because I'm not going to be able to solve for x, but I can solve for y. y equals inside. So we add them up and divide by 2, which is 130 divided by 2, which is 65. And so right here on the inside, that is 65. Oh, that's not the way I wanted to write that. This is 65. Added them up and divided by 2. Then we have to go all the way back to very beginning learning. This is a straight line. So x and 65 make a linear pair. And so x plus 65 equals 180. So x equals 115 minus 65 from both sides. That's one of the trickier examples to me. So if you follow that along, you're going to be just fine. Again, that was all adding and then dividing by 2 because the angle vertex is on the inside of the circle. You try. And I'll help you get started here. You try. Where is the vertex? Inside the circle is correct. The vertex is inside. And so I know that half of these arcs added together, or these arcs added together, divided by 2 would make the angle, which is 110. So going backwards, I don't divide by 2. I multiply by 2. So half of these arcs together makes double this number. And so x plus 97 equals 220. Double 2, double 110. Okay, so I doubled it because it's working backwards. I'm finding the arc instead of divided by 2 and multiplied by 2. Go ahead and find x now. And hopefully you've got x equals 123. Let's find the measure of arc JLK. Well, first, where the heck is arc JLK? JLK is right there. And so that arc is very much connected into this 116 degree angle. Well, where is the vertex? The vertex is J, which is on the circle. And so the angle is half the arc. Working backwards, instead of arc divided by 2, I would do arc multiplied by 2. Now we get 232. Sorry, angle multiplied by 2 makes the arc. You give this one a try. How do you find 
angle Q, P, R. Now, what is the degree measure? The vertex is on the circle. Hopefully you got that it's half of 148, so it's 74. I don't love this example, but we'll make it work here, and we'll move on to the homework assignment. Right? The vertex here is T. It's outside the circle. The circle makes 180. I'm sorry, half the circle here makes 180. Erase. Erase. There you go. Right? And so this half circle makes 180. I'm trying to find this little arc here. Now, to me, I would just do 180 minus 134. And I would get 46. But let's check it. Does 134 minus 46 divided by 2 equal 44? It ends up being 88 divided by 2 which does equal 44, and so we know it is correct. So they know it was, uh, this is not a great example of what we're looking for, um, but hopefully you understand uh, the similarity to the other rules. And so this is the assignment in my class. I wish you the best of luck.